Today is September 21st, 1983. This is Joe Todd, an interview with Ruth Hayes Jones. Yeah. Mrs. Jones, where were you born? I was born in Diamond. Diamond. Diamond? Can't handle. When's your birthday? November the 12th. I was born 1911. 1911. Who was your father? My father was a, an old country doctor out there, R.B. Hayes. What's his name? R. R. B. Hayes. Yeah, Rutherford. Named after right. Rutherford B. Hayes. He happened to be born the year that hmm. President Hayes was inaugurated. Yeah. Who was your mother? My mother was uh, a dentist. Hmm. Uh, big, married in Indiana and moved out to Simon in 1906. What was her name? Uh, Alice Connett. Hayes. They were married in Indiana? Yeah. How come they came to Oklahoma? Well, they were a young couple, and come west, young man, come west, I guess. Uh, someone out there said that there was an opening for a doctor at Diamond, but didn't have any. And so my father and mother just came out in the quite early. <laughs> Early days. 1906. They come by train? Yeah, they came by train. Rock Island. They talk about Guyman in the early days, 1906, what the town was like. Oh, yes. It was just, uh, you might say, one little main street with probably, and they had the livery stable, and, and uh, I think one hotel. Mm -hmm. Just very, very. Yeah. But uh, if you can't see the Texas County. What's your first memories of Guyman? <laughs> My first memories of Guyman? <laughs> oh, I don't know. We lived in a nice house. And, and uh, I was always there, so yeah. I don't have any first memories. What did Main Street look like? What oh, do you remember of it? I, I remember when they paved Main Street. Oh, what but, year was that? It was when I was in high school in the 20s. Probably twenty eight. The pavement street. Before then, it was just a muddy, muddy uh, street. Was your father the only doctor in Diamond? Uh, no. Later on, there were more doctors. Mm -hmm. but, uh, he was out there early enough that he delivered babies in dugouts. <laughs> In fact, Joe, I want to tell you, one time he was called out and, and he, was, he had a driver that came out to see him and in this dugout and, and the patient's husband was someplace working some other, but he wasn't there, but her father was there and her mother, and her father went out to help put the team up and the old gentleman came in and he said, well, Doc, that certainly is nasty smelling medicine you have there. I thought, I said, yes, we have to have a disinfectant in the confinement case. And then by that time, the old fellow dropped on the floor. And his wife said, well, what's the matter with that? And the girl said, well, yeah, what's that that? My father said, oh, he's fainted. And the gentleman said, no, he's dead. <laughs> he took everything. Step he made that night, he had to step over that dead man because the weather was severe, and <laughs> his driver slept in the steps coming down into the dugout. And he said he certainly was happy when it got to be daylight, <laughs> and he could send the driver for uh, help. <laughs> said he had two hysterical women, one of them, one of them didn't labor. Dad was out there and they really had some rough time. <laughs> what were some of the main businesses in Diamond? Oh, we had to. And who owned it? Who were the owners? Uh, well, originally there was a, a grocery. It was called Diamond Mercantile. And a man by the name of Ed Diamond, I believe, started it. And then uh, 
nephew or son-in-law or something of his showed jealousy uh, had big interest in it and they had groceries and of course there was each village was very boring so there was one picture show called the, the dime and, uh, the, i remember going to it i had a friend who lived next door and he'd come over and do some chores around our house for a quarter and then he could take me to the matinee on Saturday. We could get in we could get in for ten cents piece. <laughs> I can remember that, but then it was just uh, when I was little it was mainly wheat and of course cattle. Then later uh, gas and oil. Right. Did yes. your father do any farming at all? No, he'd uh, furnish the wheat uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. but he didn't own any any land. Yeah. Ever go on your father on any of his calls? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. What's the most interesting call that you went on? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I went quite often with him. I, I usually stay in, stay in the car now. Papa didn't have a car until he was well over 50. He had a driver. He had a, he drove him. Mm -hmm. Of course, up before then, he had a team. But they kept down to Liver Stable. Who owned the Liver Stable? A uh, man with a great name of Joe uh, Bush and Ox Stevens. And when I was in high school, we used to go to Mr. Stevens' house. And they had a sister radio set. And I think it was about the only radio in town. And we'd stay over at the air and listen to Nighthawks from the <laughs> San Francisco State. Look, I don't know, but oh, that'd be a thrill. What year was that? Uh, probably early 20s. Mm -hmm. Did. Uh did your father always have a car or did he have a buggy? Oh, I, like I say, he had a team uh, until cars came in. I think he had a one lunged Rio. His first car was a one lunged Rio. And then later on, when he got to driving, he uh, always had goods. I guess mm -hmm. he thought his better cars would build goods. <laughs> I don't know. My mother died, though, however, when I was. Uh, Eleven. Yeah. Would your father go to medical school? Uh, graduated from Purdue University when they were affiliated with. Uh, no, he graduated from Indiana Medical School and he had affiliated with Purdue. Would your mother go to dental school? A Fort Green Dental College. Mm -hmm. No. Did she was she a practicing dentist in Guyman? Yes. In fact, in 1918, when World War I was on, she went back to Indiana and took post-graduate work. As a little girl, what kind of chores do you do around the house? Oh, I carried in the kitchen. What else you do? Well, I gathered eggs. My sister was afraid to chip it. She was <laughs> She was happy she didn't have to go to her <laughs> And uh, I tried to not help with the dishes, but I usually <laughs> got stuck with helping with the dishes. Did you have indoor plumbing? Uh, yes. We were the first house in town to have a, a bathroom, however I remember. We had uh, an outside six sails that was built in with our barn. It was, mm -hmm. it was pretty nice. It wasn't flimsy like it, like, like the pretty say. Mm -hmm. We used to have, it was pretty nice too, all of us. But uh, I remember I used to take my bath on Saturday afternoon uh, in the galvanized tub in, in the kitchen. What do the neighbors think about your indoor? Uh, oh, I, I, I think they. I think that all people were beginning to mm -hmm. think about them, and but like I say, we had we had the first one. Mm -hmm. 
Was there any organized effort to uh, support World War One in Diamond? Oh my goodness, yes. We had a banker across the way who was a German man by the name of Gottlieb, Enz, E-N-Z. And uh, he and a close of his by the name of Heine Clues, also from German descent, would go out in the country to the German settlements and make uh, speeches for, uh, in favor of uh, for liberty bonds, to try to sell liberty bonds and whatever. It was quite, and at one time I remember, I remember having to pick bugs off of potato plants. <laughs> That's why I remember being spaded up off our yard and uh, planted. Uh, I think potatoes were in my front yard. <laughs> I had to take two little pieces of sticks and take off the nasty pit bugs. <laughs> And then we uh, we bought the flour by the hundred pounds. And I know a hundred pounds of flour and a hundred pounds of sugar we had. And we had meatless days. And we'd have meatless days and wheatless days, I know. And I think on the wheatless days we had cornmeal mush for supper. <laughs> and then we had fried mush for breakfast. <laughs> Being a meat eater, I didn't, I didn't care for those meat to stay. <laughs> no, people, everybody out there was quite patriotic. And uh, I remember when airplanes first came, we'd all go run out in the yard and everybody'd look at all that. <laughs> just so excited to see an airplane. What about Armistice Day? Uh, I was seven. What was that day like? Uh, as, as well as I can remember, everybody was quite happy because the boys would be coming home. Uh, we didn't have anyone. My father was, he came over here to try to get in service. And, and they told him he was needed more at home in his capacity as a, a doctor than mm -hmm. he was here. Mm -hmm. And besides, I think he had a heart murmur and also flat feet. <laughs> he was turned down. But he didn't get in. That's about the only thing I can remember. And I remember the boys coming home. Uh, they were fatigued. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, wrapped, 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 wrapped around their, yeah. their legs. Mm -hmm. Was there a big victory parade in Diamond? I don't remember. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, I just, just don't remember. What about the flu epidemic? Oh, that was terrible. That was 1917 and 18, I think. And we had a bad blizzard. And our undertaker died, I remember. And my mother, sometimes when my father was out on the call, would go on a call. I mean, go and do, and do what she could. But it was, it was pretty bad. We lost a lot of very fine people during the epidemic. How many people died in the diamond area? I don't know, mm. but uh, I'd say probably about 7%. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> How but, bad was the blizzard? What do you remember oh, about that blizzard? Yeah, oh, I can remember the blizzard. Oh, I remember one in particular. Our school was directly across the street, and I think Papa took me that morning. Uh, and uh, then that afternoon, when the school was out, we didn't have, I don't think there were over three or four kids in the whole school <laughs> that day. And I remember the, uh, I got lost coming home, the blizzard was so bad, I couldn't see our house. And I got headed, I got headed north and somebody down the, the street found me. <laughs> they called. <laughs> but not just crossing the street. <laughs> what year did you start the school? Well, let's see. I started when I was at the kindergarten. That's been 1960. What was the name of the school? I just, uh, I went to a private kindergarten. It was in the 
Methodist Church. A woman by the name of Mrs. Snead had it, and she was from the South, and they always kidded me and told me that's where I got my Southern accent, but from a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that had anything to do with it. Then did you go to public schools? Then? Oh yes, went to public schools. Yeah. yeah. Went all through all twelve grades there. Mm -hmm. And did your father have the first car in Diamond? No, no, but he he was one of the last people in Diamond to buy a car because <laughs> uh, he always had to drive it. Yeah. Who had the first car in Diamond? I have no idea. Could have been A.D. Hopkins or somebody who was quite a car enthusiast. And I, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I wasn't particularly interested in cars. 1920s. Were there many flappers around Diamond? Well, I, at that time I didn't think they called them flappers. <laughs> we were Methodist kids. Oh, you, Everybody had a good time. <laughs> yeah. You know what a flapper is? Yes, I know what a flapper is. You know, did did you wear the short skirt? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. In fact, it, when I graduated from, well, when I was a junior senior banquet, I had a taffeta that was short in front and long behind. It was quite, it was quite snazzy. What year did you graduate? 1929. Mm -hmm. So that was about 1928. Yeah. Um, did you bob your hair? Oh, yeah, my hair was always short. I didn't have enough of it to grow, to grow long. No, I, I think at one time I had a, a little top knot and they rolled it in a, in a French roll. But most of the time it was just cut Dutch bob. Mm -hmm. So most of the girls in Diamond wore the short dresses and bobbed their hair? Yeah, no, the, there was a group before me who wore puffs. They, they called it teasing now, but they ratted their hair and made big ear puffs. They thought they were some snazzy. <laughs> then just a little bit older, they wore mid suits. I, I never did wear mid suits, but it was more or less a, a school uniform. Mm -hmm. But uh, we wore silk stockings and, and good dresses flirted with the football players. <laughs> had, we had a good time. The Depression, 1930s. Uh, I was in college. Where at? OU. OU. My father, during the bank moratorium, I, I don't, don't know whether that was 30 or was it 31. I don't know. Mm. Probably 31 or 2. My father sent me $10 a week money order and I gave it to uh, the lady we boarded with so she could buy groceries so she couldn't write checks. Hmm. The money was pretty, money was pretty scarce. Yeah. You could write a check for the amount of something if you purchased in Oklahoma City once and I bought something here and hmm. paid for whatever I bought. I think it was shoes down here on Main Street. Yeah. What was your major in college? I majored in English. <laughs> I, uh, most everybody did. Yeah. You said that you stayed with a lady. Did you board with her? Uh, we slept. We had sleeping rooms in one house and, and uh, ate and down the street two or three blocks. However, I think my first year there, I stayed in the dormitory. Which dormitory? Oh, Robinson Hall. Miss Hester in Robinson Hall. Mm -hmm. What What did your room look like? Oh, How was it furnished? I it was just more or less uh, had twin beds, and, and uh, my roommate and I bought our bed spreads and mat just about like college kids do now, just because we didn't have any. Uh, Grills, electric grills, so it was strictly sleeping. Mm -hmm. and what I, year did you graduate? I didn't. You got didn't. married. You got married. Mm -hmm. I heard about 
a bar in Clayton, New Mexico. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't ever come to him. Do what? Hand me another couple. He's gone over to Clayton. He may be in this back room bar and I think we had a chicken sandwich or something for lunch. And I drank a couple of Tom Collins. Came up and hand me Bill Vander. I stopped at the cash register and his wife and I came on out. Walking down the street was a pretty good sized man. And he had on a white magnolia, white coveralls with magnolia vests and the moment. I just started up to him and he looked up at him and I said, Boo! I guess I <laughs> thought I was a little bit scary. <laughs> That's what two Tom Collins could do well. He could get fortified. <laughs> What'd he do? He just did. He paid attention. I guess he saw where we were <laughs> every time. That Eckland Bar still is a, a nice place. What's the name of it? Eckland. Eckland? Uh -huh. It's in Clayton, New Mexico? Yeah, Eckland uh, Hotel. Mm -hmm. Was that the place to go at that time? Well, not necessarily. But of course, that was in Prohibition days, yeah. And, uh, mm. Uh, I guess no. No, I guess uh, New Mexico was legal. Oh, yes, I'm sure New Mexico was legal because one time when I went on a field trip with Pan Am Museum Club out of Goodwill, School of Goodwill, uh, we stopped at Simran, New Mexico, and went in the saloon there, and that was the first time I'd ever put my foot on a brass rail. I just put my foot on the brass ring as big as I did in order to do a shot of whiskey. He was on the auto. How, how long did it take to drive from Diamond to Clayton? Oh, uh, not very long. Uh, at, at that time, no, not very long. Mm -hmm. Probably, I'll say, mm -hmm. very long. Yeah. How, how many miles is it? That's long. That's 75 to Delco. I'd be hundred and I'd be hundred, hundred and forty. I don't know. Really don't know. Where'd you go for recreation in Diamond? Oh first we uh on Sundays we had Christian Endeavor and and BYPU and all those. And then they had school parties and uh we had nice clean parties this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it wasn't any different than kids are now. Yeah. We'd go to the car and go out to the river sometimes. And the Cimarron? Oh, the, the Beaver. Beaver. Which is the beginning of the North Navy. Okay. The dust storms. So, it, <laughs> it, they, they wouldn't believe anything I told them. <laughs> Really, no, they wouldn't. They, uh, well, it was so bad that we sometimes we had a little apartment that connected with Stubbs Air and Opity. And sometimes we'd get up at night and hang up a sheet, catch the dust, and play bridge. Because we couldn't sleep, the dust was so strong. Hang up a sheet and play bridge? Yeah, we hang up a sheet that was wet. Oh, okay. And, uh, we had to collect some of the... What, hang it over off the door or the window or... Yeah, just... And uh, Vera would come in and my call me in the morning. She'd say, it's your turn to sweep the tub. We, we swept the tub. And I worked at a little fashion shop. And the girls from the courthouse would come home to get their hair done. And it was like girls now. They like to get their hair done. They put on their old dirty headscarf and <laughs> go back to work. One time, I went to with Sue Alexander up to Buckland, no, up to Wichita, to get a new car. My husband had this agency there, and we went up to get a new car. And coming back, oh, the road was terrible. They had snow plows on the road, it just drifted. So we stopped at Buckland because it was getting dark. I stayed all night in Buckland. And uh, Sue said, Ruthie, when you take your shower, be sure to get the mud out of your nose. <laughs> yeah. 
storm. Can you describe a dust storm? Oh, beautiful. Just gorgeous. Uh, I'm one of the few people that thought they were pretty. They rolled in. Just great big billows. How high would the dust be? Oh, clear to the... <laughs> as high as you can. Way high. About several hundred feet, several thousand feet? Well, I, I don't know. That's... Uh, yeah. It's a... Uh, they looked awfully large, though. And they... They rolled in, and they roll in in layers. It'd be different colors. Hmm. What colors were they? Oh, pink and black and brown. Just gorgeous. <laughs> I enjoyed watching them. But my husband and I were watching one Sunday. And uh, we ran in the house. One Sunday afternoon, he said, you had some space. I had to fumble around to find the, the light switch. It was a pitch black daytime. How'd you breathe? Well, you just did. They had what they called dust pneumonia, but uh, it was just. Did you not? <laughs> no, dust pneumonia? Mm -hmm. What's that? I guess just the inflammation in the lungs caused from pneumonia. I mean, caused from the dust. And people wore bandanas over their faces like cowboys did. Mm -hmm. Keep them breathing dust. What about the time you, you broke your back? Oh, yeah. That was kind of funny. Visiting a uh, friend. I was at, on a ranch out on the, on the cold water. We decided to go over and see some friends that working in a farm during this time harvest. Oh, right after harvest. I was going along and uh, that girl said, we'll buy a lot of gas. And I said, step on it. We'll, we'll get there sooner. She stepped on it about that time the corner showed and over we went. And I went out the passenger window and uh, came up on top of me. And finally when they got me, they uh, put me on an army cot and brought me into town on a wheat truck. Then they took me on a baggage car up to Liberal, Kansas, to the hospital. How far was that? Oh, Liberal, just 45 miles. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> How long you laid up with the broken back? Oh, I'm it is the last word in the back, and, and uh, I don't know, I miss some school. Mm -hmm. And then a cast, a body cast. But I forgot about it, it's long ago, 1928, I think. 28. Did you do any work at harvest time? Oh, occasionally I'd go out with some friend who's. Uh, I didn't ever work in harvest, but we'd uh, help take some meals. Hog stands were cute. <laughs> they, they were cute. And we'd take big containers of lemonade and big containers of, of ice tea. I've always there. heard about feeding the harvest hands. What kind of meals would you fix? Oh, them big fried chicken and green beans and new potatoes. Oh, just big meals. How many harvest hands were in a crew? Uh, depended, of course, on the amount of land they were harvesting. There'd probably be any place from four to ten. Mm -hmm. But with the modernized combines, two men can pretty well handle a field. Mm -hmm. Now, didn't. Ever raising your broom corn out in the panhandle? Oh, they do raise broom corn, yes. How do they, what part of the broom corn do they make the broom out of? I I don't know. Uh, I know at Garmin, they pull broom corn down around Lindsay Hill. They uh, cut it. Hmm. Garmin, what's what's they, the difference? I don't know. One, I think it's warp, and, and uh, I don't know so much. I can't, I can't tell the difference between oats and rye and, and wheat. As I said, they're all cereal crops. Mm -hmm. I don't know very much about farming. 
bootleggers Van Gaiman. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we just like any other town. Any bootleggers? Who was the biggest bootlegger? Uh, there, there were several, but I, I knew him and I knew his his daughters. He had not nice daughters. But I ran around with some of them. Did he make his own whiskey with a chip? I, I, I don't know how he got. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's been gone some time, but he's quite a good man. Uh, quite a charitable good man. Now, when we lived at Cordell, the bootlegger there was the most charitable man in town. Hmm. I guess easy come, easy go. Yeah. Don't you guess? Yeah. Is it called chalk? No, we, we, we called it home brew. Uh, they had some down, they had chalk beer down in southern part of Oklahoma. Yeah. Just to be plain home brew, I guess maybe they passed through with a mold or something. Mm -hmm. Was there much alcohol around Diamond in the Prohibition days? Uh, I don't know that there was. Like I like I say, he had. My father was a teetotaler, and uh, I, I drank a little homebrew. Mm -hmm. Were there any shady ladies in Diamond? Uh, ladies of ill repute. Yes, I'm sure there were. I'm sure there were. Uh, it was no better or no worse in any other place. Mm -hmm. I, I, I personally didn't know. When did the oil boom hit Diamond? I couldn't tell you. It, uh, I don't say it hit. I think mm -hmm. it, it developed. Is there more oil or gas out there? Uh, or both? I don't know. I imagine it's probably more gas. Mm -hmm. Did you know Julius Kohler? Who? Julius Kohler. Kohler. K-O-H-L at the Kohler Ranch north of Diamond. No, I don't think so. He's the one that built the dam in the Cinderon River for irrigation. I don't think so. Because yeah. the Cinderon doesn't go out that way. I'm sorry, Boy City. Boy City, I'm sorry. Wrong town. Wrong town, no, I didn't know. Okay. I got married in Boy City. You did? <laughs> Where'd you meet your husband? Oh, I've gone to school with all these kids always. I don't even think Kindergarten. He was a new boy came to town. And I got him quick before he found out too much about him. What's his name? What's his name, Henry? <laughs> Pretty good boy. When you married? Uh, December twenty second, nineteen thirty four. Nineteen thirty four. Almost forty nine years. Middle of the depression. Middle of the depression. He made five dollars and twenty cents per day. What kind of work did he do? Telephone. What did he do for the telephone company? Oh, he'd be installer and troubleshooter and general mm -hmm. handyman. Then in 1935, we went to Southwestern Bell. And, and old Diamond, oh, he only made $98 a month. And then when we went to Southwestern Bell, we just got up to five dollars and twenty cents a day. Someone asked, I told somebody that the other day, and they said, You mean an hour? I said, Yes, sir. A day. <laughs> How long did you, now did you live in Boy City or live in Diamond after you were married? Uh, we lived in Diamond for a short time. And How then, come you were married in Boy City? Well, it was the closest county seat next to Diamond. But you weren't married in Diamond? No. Why? Oh, we ran off. Oh, you ran off? Yeah. <laughs> Got off work one Saturday night and drove to Boy City. What did your parents think of it? Uh, I, I called my father. He said, well, that was fine. He said, he'd be there. And I told him. And he said, try to be home for supper tomorrow night. <laughs> mm -hmm. After Guyman, would you move? Cordell. Still telephone work? Yeah, telephone work. And uh, from Cordell to El Reno. 
back to El Reno. And back to El Reno? Mm -hmm. Then to Elk City. And then I believe uh, in Oklahoma City. Moved in Oklahoma City in 1940. 1940. How big was Cordell when he moved there? Oh, might have been 2000. Mm -hmm. Who was who was the prominent people in Cordell? Well, there was a Mr. Wheeler who had a grocery store, Stan Wheeler. He was a nice man. And uh, uh, I don't, of course, there was Mr. Goslin. Uh, had a Goslin five and ten, and he was one of the founders of TG Moore. Hmm. Thompson Goslin and Young. Right. He had Goslin five and ten. And he was from uh, Cordell. Cordell. Yeah. Hmm. I can't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What kind of meals did you fix in the Depression? Your oh. average meals. Well. Uh, How'd you save on money and food? And uh, I don't think food was too difficult for us. However, uh, some of the people could get, could, had to cook jackrabbit over a couch at fire. It was that bad. I've never been that hungry. Mm. I've eaten like that. What was, how could you describe your home life during those years in, in the Depression? Well, of course, I, during, during the 30s, I was in school. And uh, I, I don't think we felt it a diamond like uh, some places. Mm -hmm. So was that it was mostly farming. Yeah. Were you pretty well isolated from the Depression in Diamond, or? Uh, I I just don't think it it got done. I mean, like stocks and and uh, bonds and uh, people didn't people didn't have money invested. In. Uh, it just they just working people, mm -hmm. and there were no factories at all. Because life was just, diamond was a, a fun time. I guess it still is, basically. Uh, yeah, I, it's a nice town, I feel. Mm -hmm. They had some beautiful homes out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Did you know the Hitch family? Uh, definitely. What was Mr. Hitch like? Uh, Henry or Charlie or Jim or... <laughs> the old man, which... Oh, uh, you mean... Uh, lady, if you call it. Yeah, the, I guess. Was there one senior Mr. Hitch, or was it a group effort? Well, Hitch okay, there's, there's a book. Just give me a brief, your ideas of the Hitch family. Well, they, they were very nice people. They were quite religious. I don't mean they were fanatic or something like that, but they were very good people. And they had a nice home. Uh, we used to go out all weekend. Had daughter Margie, who was in the same class as I, but was. And we go on weekends to see her. And they had a fireplace in all the bedrooms. And the hired hand would come up and build a fire in the morning in the mm -hmm. fireplace so we could get up and go. And Mr. Hitch was as hard working as, as anybody. She cooked big breakfast. That was a very fine woman. I guess there were many what cattle and wheat farmers? They were sure. cattle. Cattle right. Because they later uh, how did they get all their land? Well <laughs> Panhandle Pioneer explains a lot about it. Um, I, I don't really know uh, how they got it. They, they bought a lot of it, I'm sure. And 
stuff. So I, I need to fix it up because I need land. Uh, now, who is Lance Hitch? He, 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 Henry B. Hitch Jr. He's a, uh, on board the agency. That's the. And who is his father? Henry. Henry? Yeah. Was he the one that actually started the, the Hitch Ranch? I don't know. I don't think so. It could have been old Jim or JK. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, there were some uncles and. Ever hear anyone talk about the old ranches that were in the Panhandle before it was settled? Yes, in, in fact, old gentleman by the name of Tyler, Judge Tyler, moved out into big office in County, Texas. In the, and they built their house of sandstone. And they built it up on the hill so they could. Watch out for Indians. And uh, they were never troubled. Indians didn't cause them any trouble, but they always gave them a B for a. Uh, uh, where was their ranch located? Uh, in the Panhandle of Texas. Mm -hmm. How far know. from Oklahoma? Well, I don't know, maybe 75 miles yeah. from Diamond. Ever hear of the 101 Ranch in the yeah. Panhandle? Not, not in the Panhandle. When there was one old one ranch up here at Mohawk. Yeah, there's also one in the Panhandle. I, I didn't know. Yeah. And the people I talked to said it wasn't the same ranch, it was a totally different ranch. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. There was a Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker mm -hmm. Ranch is one of the large ranches. Who, who owned that? A man by the name of Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker? <laughs> That's logical. <laughs> logical. That's and, um. It was, I believe, about the largest ranch. Yeah. Did you know him? Was it Stonebreaker? I didn't know. No. No. World War II. What were you doing when you heard that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor? I was living here in Oklahoma City, living over on 9th Street. What was your first reaction? Well, I knew that. Uh, Everyone would have to register. <laughs> you have any kids at that time? Yes, I did. I had uh, Helen and Barbara, my two girls. What was your feeling about your kids? I wasn't, wasn't worried about them particularly. Mm -hmm. well, did you help in the war effort here in Oklahoma City during the war? Oh. Uh, more or less, I guess. I, I didn't hinder it. I mean, I didn't do anything to hinder it. I, yeah. I had a kind of help when they uh, signed up for rationing. And How did rationing work? Well, you'd be given a book. It had so many coupons in it, I believe. It had books. And you were allowed so many points a week. Now, what's a point? Uh, well, vegetables and fruits were classified as they had points. And each person was allowed, I don't remember how many points. Mm -hmm. but so, the more people you had, the more points you got. Yeah, and the more people, and then the more succeeded. Okay. But if you didn't, uh, we didn't use much sugar. And so I carried my sugar stamp or coffee stamp. Because a neighbor of mine didn't drink coffee, but they used mm -hmm. a lot of sugar. So neighbors traded stamps yes. back and forth. Yes. Okay. What was the biggest thing you used in rationing? Me, I guess. Is that the hardest thing to get a hold of? Yes, it was pretty hard. I remember once my daddy sent me a good ham to the bailer. <laughs> it was cut up in kind of package. It wasn't sliced, but it was kind of chunked up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was happy, I was happy to see that. <laughs> I, I think he was, you know. The beef was. 
No. So every so often we get some good news. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. We lived with pretty good. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was Oklahoma City like when the war ended? I don't know. I think that they, was it the CJ Day? They had a oh, quite a little celebration downtown. Did you go down for it? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. That's just more on life in the panhandle in the early days. Yeah. Was it? I mean, of course, being from Michigan, Oklahoma, to me, it seemed like it'd be a hard life after it. Oh, I didn't. People were neighborly. Yeah. Uh, little town. People were neighborly. What about floods? Oh, we didn't have floods. Mm hmm. <laughs> we basically didn't have enough rain in each year. That long flood. Mm -hmm. Ever go to Black Mesa? Yeah, I've been to Black Mesa. Was that a big a vacation spot? No. What was the big, uh, were there any big vacation spots in the Panhandle? Not in the Panhandle, no. You got to go over to New Mexico or Arizona, Colorado. Mm hmm. In fact, I was going to decide to go before I tried to ever be in any other county. I mean, any other county other than the Panhandle. Yeah. In Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I've been in Kansas and Texas and on the Rock Island. But what kind of house you live in as a little girl? Is it little? Uh, I thought we had nine rooms. Nine yeah. rooms? Uh -huh. Two mm -hmm. story. Two story. Yeah. Um. I thought all it was the only thing out there for that that time, but a, a job making ninety or hundred a month a lot used to get by great. Mm hmm. Hmm. When did you move to Panhandle? Me? Yeah. Thirty nineteen thirty three. June. How come you went out there? Telephone. Was it, was it 33? No, it was 34, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 34. Mm -hmm. Old Dad had was district manager of the telephone company. That he was a teamster. But the company that owned Diamond, he, that was still in his parents' house. So he wanted me to get out there and make the show personal. So I did. I didn't get along with Jeff Hester very well, but who was Jeff Hester? He was the boss of the district manager out of Diamond. What was the uh, name of the phone company? Oh, I don't know what it's called. It's DTE now, but they sold out. I didn't, it was something like Western Power and Light or yeah. something. Yeah. Power and Light and Telephone. It had. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember the name of it really. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Any of your friends live in a dugout? Not my friends, no. No, I think they uh, have done away with most dugouts. Uh, I don't know they still trees out there, though. But even in 34, there were very few trees. And the climate was very low humidity. And now with all the irrigation and everything, it's, it's about where there's lots of trees and the humidity is even. And especially when they're growing their row crops in the summertime and irrigating and all that. Community in the whole area is changed. Mm -hmm. It's still great country to live in, though. But the kids are here. 
that we need to talk about, about the time out there and, and some other stage ahead. And, and, uh, all the, my father's gone, my sister's gone. And, yeah, we thank all of them here except Fred. Yeah. And so Carolyn really needs to call her as friends. Yeah, so. all, all those kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five, five of them who live in here. So. Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have? Six. Six. Two girls and four boys. How many grandkids? Seventeen plus two great grandsons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You bet. In the house. Yeah, that, that's the one in. I told you that I couldn't find the, I had seen around for the light switch. Yeah, that was April of 35 when the black duster came through. It could have been. And I think they said that was the worst it duster. It was probably the worst, but they had a lot that you would call black duster, so yeah. it absolutely got pitch dark. In fact, Joe said, fell up at Hooker, his doctor had warned him if he didn't quit drinking, he was going to lose his eyesight. And he had taken a nap and he woke up and... Couldn't see it. He just said black duster. He just didn't want him to take his neck. He really put the fear of God in him. <laughs>